Welcome to my home, a wild island in the North Atlantic Ocean. What a beautiful spot. Just look of it. I'm Justin, and this is my dog, Saku. We're going to take you on an expedition for a few days. 52 to be exact. We'll be self-sufficient, living only off what we carry and what the land provides. My passion is long trips in the wilderness. I do it to move, to feel a part of it, to utilize it, to live in harmony with animals, and to see if I can. I'm drawn to rarely seen country. I crave the joys and hardships of getting there. Now come along with us through the woods. Good boy, stay there. I got Saku left on shore now. I'm just out in an empty canoe here. So I'm gonna try out a small spoon here, like a little Cleo model. Ishan, and I thought he fell off. Hey, shadow right in the canoe. Off the hook. Go on. Ooh, he's a nice one. Beautiful trout. Beautiful. A few more casts here now and I'll call it an evening. You just hate to go in. It's a chance for big fish, you know. Nice brookie here. smaller than the first one I got, but a dandy nonetheless. This place is wonderful. Last cast, worked out for me. That's it now, it's starting to rain a bit. I'm going in for the night. I'm on an expedition with Saku in Newfoundland's Beta Nord Wilderness Reserve, a vast tract of unspoiled nature. My goals are to explore deeper into its interior and enjoy myself. So far I've been hitting both nails on the head. 
Saka was in his glee. Now it's day 10, and we're halfway through a difficult upriver section of 3 kilometers, with many rapids. Our next objective is Jubilee Lake. Okay, it's a new day. We're back at it going up the river. I think I'm going to portage everything around this ledge. Looks a bit greasy. Only about 150 yards. I'm going to bring it around all of it. And then I'll get back in the river, tracking the canoe or wading, whatever I need to do to get it upstream, the remaining one and a half kilometers. But it's a nice day. It's cool. Good day for a bit of hard work. Cloud cover. Moving in this manner is demanding. I take each step carefully as I wade through the water. There's no easy way to get a canoe upstream. I choose what works best for me. The river is powerful and I must use my strengths to navigate it safely. I almost lost her name. I rocked the canoe around a rock, tried to sneak it up the side actually. The current just grabbed a hold of it. It's some nice though to be in the river midsummer. It's when I feel most a part of surroundings. To be honest with you, you feel that warm water on your legs. You're just walking up the river at a very slow pace. You know, when the conditions aren't, when, when the river's not too rough, like now. And you're just taking it all in, it's absolutely beautiful. Trout again for supper tonight. Sack. <laughs> uh, it never gets old. Let's see if we can get a few more. Sack. A couple for me, a couple for you. Another nice mud trout sack. Come on, you bugger. Ah, a little bigger than the last one. Number two. Woo hoo, look at this one of fish. What a beauty. That's over the pound mark for sure. What a beauty. 
we got to portage all the gear now. I'm just scouting it out. There's quite a little drop here from Jubilee down to a steady below. It's around a quarter of a kilometer. It'll take some time, but we got time. So I'm going to finish walking up here and checking things out. And then I'll go back for round one. All gear is now up the Jubilee Lake. Deadly. Let's get out and paddling her now. Reaching Jubilee Lake, we've put behind us the first tough stretch. Climbing higher into the interior, the landscape begins to change. The raw, forbidding beauty of Newfoundland is revealed and the desolate barrens begin to show off their simple, primitive ways. They are infested with stunted spruce trees, bent and tangled from the winds that drive hard across the land. We call this vegetation Tuckamore. The rugged terrain of this island is a blessing and a curse. It is free but savage. Whatever it is, we are fortunate to have it place with wild expanses of uninhabited country to roam when the call of adventure boils in the blood. Here comes the rain again, Zach. It was a hard shower there on the portage. And now it's raining again. I wish I was a water dog like you, Zach. I wouldn't need this raincoat. I could just sit naked. I uh, just started pouring. It was off and on all afternoon, and then coming across in the canoe, I just pulled in on a fair sized peninsula here on Jubilee Lake. Beautiful, rocky, sandy in spots. And just as I got it set up, it started pouring again. So I'm in now getting the wet clothes off me. Oh, I'm going to get that little mini stove going now. It's good in times like this when you don't want to get out and get a fire going. You can just sit in the tent and have a cup of coffee or whatever. Wicked. How are you making out, Zach? We have a little damp. No harm done, though. No. Oh, something nice to get that off. Oh, yeah. Leave it all out there now. All right, that's it. Okay, this is where we're staying this evening, out on Jubilee Lake, Jubilee Beach. <laughs> it's about 11 kilometers long, this lake. The rain just stopped. I got some stuff tucked away under the tent, sack in the tent. I haven't fully unloaded the canoe yet. It just started pouring like it was raining all day off and on. Look at the water. I was only in the tent for probably 20 minutes. 20, 30 minutes. Having a little sit back.
warm up the old engine on the fire steel, and then I'll get a blaze going as the fog burns out this morning. Everything's a bit wet from all the rain, so I'm just easing it on to the top of the fire. Birch bark was soaking wet too, but that'll always start. Same with these spruce twigs, you just got to give them a shake and get a bit of the moisture off them. With the birch bark, you just go easy. A couple small bits at a time. Don't smother it like I almost done it there then. Jubilee Lake. She's a beauty. Man, oh man. What a spot. I could set up camp here for a week for sure. Thunderstruck, baby. Looks like it's going to rain pretty hard. I can feel it. We'll get tucked away and see what happens. <laughs> Sack gave a little fright, didn't you? Mother Nature, do my cleaning for me. Day two on Jubilee Lake were grounded by the grimy weather, but on our third day we head off to Lake Peck for a journey through the surrounding country. Beautiful day. Still some overcast weather, but it's warm. It's not raining. We're out for a hike on a hill about well, a kilometer oh, down the shore from camp. Hey, it's nice to look around the area. And that's part of this trip. Sack has gone ahead, sniffing things out. What do you think, Sack? It's not bad, is it? Lovely spot. Moose got this place limbed. This tree here, all these trees, all the branches are eating off the balsam fir. This looks like an old wharf. Must have been an old camp here before this place became a protected reserve back in, I believe it was 1991. There was camps, a fair amount of camps still here in the area and they all had to be torn down. Anyhow, always finding something new out exploring. That's what I like about it. We got a baby lynx up there. Sack, you can smell it. Oh, there he is, there he is, there he is. He's sitting down up there. You can barely see him, eh, Sack? He's right there. You can see him now. See him moving? Look at the face on him. See him moving? Did not expect to see a lynx. How cool is that? That is wicked. Now the sack, that's the cat you don't want to chase, buddy. I'd say he'd tear the eyes right out of Saku. A 
I seen something creeping along the shore and we were probably oh 150 200 yards out or longer I didn't think it was a coyote I did for a second but it had that prowl to it I said that's a lynx so I came in figured it'd be gone and he, he came down from the bush again it's young it's curious see it's just up sitting watching us oh man oh man that's awesome he's still there it's hardly moved a muscle Right there, in the top right hand corner now, between the trees, you see his little face looking out. It's just sitting there, I wonder if Zach has seen it yet. He, I wouldn't say he has, because if he, if he did, he'd be at the boat. He seems that tame, you can almost go out and pet him. Okay, now we're six or so kilometers down from camp. And we're at the point where we're gonna have to go up river again tomorrow towards Kegadek Lake. I'm just down to scout it out. Might even have to cut a bit of a portage trail, I don't know. It's not too much water here. In the lower section here of the river, further up there's some fair sized drops, waterfalls even. So we're gonna have to get around them. Time will tell what we're getting into. Still can't believe we've seen that lynx. It's very rare to see one of those, especially in the middle of the day. They're more evening, morning, and nighttime active. What a treat. We got our first sign of black bear here as we're scouting out this portage. They're around. Just gotta be wary. That's fresh though. I had a look up the river on the right hand side. And it's thick woods, which it is on the left as well, but it's steeper on the right. I think I'm going to go to the left. I'm just having a fire now. I'm going to get some lunch. I'm going to take the axe and leave the canoe and stuff down here. It's one kilometer, a little over that, to the first steady. Then it gets rough again. I think overall it's close on four kilometers up to the next lake. So I'm going to try to get that one kilometer scouted out at least take the axe, limb what I can. There'll be game trails too, but I don't think I'll be able to drag the canoe up the river. There's some, some big drops and small canyons. Oh yeah, the sun just came out. It's blazing. Tuna salad for lunch. Mmm. So I made it up through the first bit of the portage. There's a big droke of woods. Probably took me 30 minutes to get up through there. For most of the way, I was hacking a little trail here and there. I made a couple marks in the trees, just tiny blaze marks. Now we're up in the barren area, and it's like this, I believe, the rest of the way. Skirting along the top of this ridge to the first steady. Hot up here though, the sun is hammering down on us. Just melting. Whew, flies are bad up here, up in a, it's a marshy area. And it doesn't look like it's gonna be too bad tomorrow, I hope. So far, so good. Getting up to the woods will be a bit of a slug. The view of Jubilee Lake up here is absolutely crazy. And we got it all to ourselves. Just me and Sack up here. And this is what we love, all alone. No one for miles and miles. So the canoe was just down here in the cove. We came up through all this woods. 
out on this marsh down here up through here and now we're on this high rock and our camp is all the way down Jubilee about five and a half kilometers roughly back to lake straight shot so we'll have a bit of a journey later this evening and get home it is coming up on 3.30 now nice caribou track up here I think we're going this way Sack. this is just beautiful up here we're getting into some deep fine country now tucked away as is usually the case this is going to add up to be probably two kilometers to this first pond and the river closer to two than one all the zigzagging we've done and I had to come out a little wider from the river than I thought we were going to have to this is going to be getting the canoe and a few loads up uh, we'll have our work cut out for us it'll be something nice getting everything up the keggy deck bingo look at that oasis that's our steady it stretches for I don't know good ways a kilometer for sure so we got Jubilee way back there and then the river cuts right through this valley like a knife it's a deep ravine and then goes on up into the pond here so I can't get down through here I gotta go I came up <clears throat> through this little spot I gotta go back out around the hill we're on and down and I should be able to get down to the pond just fine can't wait to see it Yes, sir. Made it. Get the paddle for a little bit up here anyways. Until we might have to do something like this again. Though I think we can keep to the river up here. I don't know. We'll find out tomorrow because I'm going to go back now once it has a little sit down. Look at the river. That's nice. That is pretty. It's pretty narrow. Get a drink in you, bud. I should too, I'm parched. Saku. Taking a bath, are Back to the canoe. Now, six or so kilometers back to camp. I'm looking forward to the paddle. We'll have a drink first, we'll be sack. Almost back home. Camp's on that point straight ahead. Honey, we're home. Can't wait to crawl in there later on. You have a nappy. It's nice to get back to camp after a long day. On the move, we got back just before 7 p.m. and we left 9 o'clock this morning. We covered about 17 kilometers, 18 kilometers in that period by foot and canoe roaming around. And I'm gassed. 
tell you that. Ooh. But that's what it's about. And my, is it wonderful to get back here by the fire this evening and relax. That's half the reason you do it, is to get out and work hard and do a bit of physical, put some physical effort in. And then relax. And you've earned it. And it's the best relax you've ever had. We're going to have one of those tonight, aren't we, Sack? You're already started. Got to get a bite to eat first. And then we'll let the evening set in. It's already settling in. And it's a dandy. Oh, the sun got these nice and dry, Sack. Dry as they've been since day one. morning got my fresh coffee here now looking over the maps just sizing up again our portage for today we're going from Jubilee Lake up to Kegadek Lake the route is roughly about four kilometers weaving along the river it's going to be longer than that for us because we have a big challenge getting from the start of the river where it feeds into Jubilee up to this first steady where we made it yesterday and as you can see this is the river it gets pretty rough here rapids rapids waterfall here to get up through this woods here and getting in that's the way I went yesterday into this open stuff which is barren and marsh I'm gonna have to remove a few blow down trees so I can get the canoe up First beer. See him sack. He's giving her. It's a rough go down bottom, isn't it, Sack? It starts off tangly. Lots of twists and turns up and down. So we're just on the way back now for the last load. Number four. I'll let Sack take this one off. He's looking pretty gassed. It's not bad. It's good teamwork. It's hot out. Whew. What a treat though to come back empty handed, a simple treat, just to walk with no weight on you. It's a, it's a luxury right now to walk back to this, get the food barrel. Saku shipped about 60 pounds of gear up that hill. The hill is about 200 meters long or more and she's straight up. That boy Sack. Tonight it looks like we might be camping up on the ridge, far from the river. So to save a trip down later this evening, I fill up a few water bags now. Look at Jubilee now. Good thing we got off our beach this morning up there on the point. We wouldn't have got down if we waited any later and left. She's 
blowing up a storm. There's the start of the Portage Trail. Up a steep ridge to a pile of woods and we come out on the barrens where I have three loads already left. The trail is a tangle, there's blowdown everywhere, holes where you can fall into underneath the mass. We're gonna finish it off now. Step one, Zach. Made it up the hill. I'd say we'll finish the rest tomorrow. Tell us a lovely isle of Newfoundland, my second home. So this morning I got a little trick for you. These socks, I want to stretch them out as long as I can. I only got a few pairs with me. In here for a couple months. They've ripped open here on the kind of side of my heel. So what I've done is, you know, you don't got to burn them right away. Turn them a little bit. So you're putting a hole in your instep. And that way you can get a little more out of your socks. A person has to stretch things out when they're in the woods for a while. And it's better than digging into a new pair. So we're here this morning just finishing the portage up to the first steady. I took a stop down on the river to see what it was like. We weren't far up from it. And it's pretty rough. There's canyon type walls going down through here. It's deep pools on the side of the river for the most part. So I think I made a good decision carrying around it. What do you think of it all, Sakyu? I don't know if we would have uh, had a good time coming up this in the canoe, no? Now we're going back up through here to get back up on the hills. Finishing the portage to the steady, I break the job up into chunks. We carry all items half the distance then do it over again for the last half. This adds some diversity to the otherwise repetitive grind. Okay, last trip back to get the canoe. Then we'll have everything up to the steady here. That'll be trip number nine over the last two days. So I know that path well. Looks like there's some rain coming our way. Dark skies. Sweeping in. This is the fun stuff. Cool us off, thank you. Testy day. Just seen a bear. Only up behind camp, not very far. 